let's take a look at this Casio calculator. So this is a sponsored video by Casio. They sent me this Casio FX991CW class with calculator. I do wanna show you just two features and then we're gonna do all these calculations. I'm gonna walk you through them so that we can all do the same thing. The first thing is uh, this, classpad.net. There's a free online emulator for the calculator uh, and you can use it in conjunction with the calculator. So if you're teaching a class, you can pull that up on the screen and show people the, the functions, it's pretty useful. Uh, the other one is look at things like this, the square root of two minus one. I don't know why you'd do that, but this uses uh, a display that looks like uh, what you would write in a textbook or in paper. So it's not the same format as other calculators. So that's the other really nice feature. Okay, let's just let's just get into it. Let's just start doing stuff. And as we do things, we can kind of learn how to how to use the calculator uh, by just calculating all these values. So I came up with the expression right here. 3.2 times 10 to the negative fifth over pi plus 14. I don't know what it means. It doesn't matter what it means. Let's just calculate what that is. Uh, so I'm going to first enter this number, 3.2. And again, here, the times 10 to the power instead of that EE -E button. So that really makes a lot more sense. So times 10 to the negative fifth. And I did this on purpose because it's not negative. It's shift negative, right? That's a negative multiplied by that. And then five. Now one divide by pi, if I just do divide by pi, notice that my cursor is still in the exponent. So I need to get that down. If you just push the arrow forward, it just moves to the next spot, which is the normal space. Now I can do divide by pi. Now you could type in 3.14 or however many digits of pi you remember. I don't remember that many. So I'm going to use the built-in function pi right there. So that divided by pi. Now I'm going to add 14 and press execute and there's your number. Now I have this displaying in scientific notation. Okay, that's an option that you can do under settings. You can go to calc settings, uh, number format, and then you can change the way you like it. I, that's the way I like it, and so that's the way I'm gonna use it. Uh, if you need to get back to where you are, always the home button will take you here with all the different apps and things like that. We'll use this vector in a little bit, but you just want normal calculate for now. So we're doing calculate. Let's do this one right here. Yes, it's the silly addition of fractions, which is easy to do, but the point is we wanna do it with the calculator so that we can use that later in more complicated calculations. So I wanna do this. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna show you something here. Three divided by five, that's fine. Plus two divided by seven, execute. Now, that's what you'd normally get, right? So that's 0.8857, it's because it's 8.857 times 10 to the negative one. But what if I want to display that as a fraction? You can do that. Right here, the format button. I'm going to click the format button and I'm going to go down here to improper fraction. And it just switches it to an improper fraction, 31 over 35. So that's kind of cool. I mean, yeah, that's cool. Okay, let's do the next problem. So I'm going to clear. This is one using uh, trig functions, which comes up a lot in physics, right? When we're doing vector components, that's what that looks like. 5.2 times cosine 33. And you don't have to put the closed parentheses. I can just do it right there. And I'm actually not even sure if I'm in degrees or radiance mode. I don't even remember. Let's check settings, calc settings, angle unit. I am in degrees, so that's a good thing. Okay. If you need to do radiance, you just go down there, radiance. Go there, degrees. Okay, let's use uh, the variables in the calculator. So clear, what I wanna do is say A is negative 3.2 times 10 to the fifth, B is 1.2, and then I wanna multiply them together. Yes, you could just multiply these together, but that's not the point of this video, right? I'm trying to show you how to use different features of the calculator. So let's start with this, A and B. Up here, there is a variable button. Let's clear all that. I'm gonna click the variable button. Here are all our variables. And you see, I already have some that I've used A and B. So I'm gonna redo them. So you can pick which variable you want to use. I'm gonna use A, and I'm gonna click OK. And then I've already used it, so I'm just gonna click Edit. Now I want to enter this number. So this is negative, so I need to use the shift negative again. 3.2 times 10 to the fifth, execute. And then uh, I'm going to go back and you see right there, there's my number. Is it negative? 
Yeah, it is. Okay, sorry, I can't see. Now let's do B. So B, I'm gonna go over to here. I'm gonna click OK, and I'm gonna go to Edit. And now I can just say 1.2 times 10 to the, again, negative two, execute. Now, when you click uh, the variable function, let's go home, I can click that and say recall, and it'll put it there, so that's A. But you can also use the letters on the keyboard right here, so there's B as a second function. So I'm gonna say times second function B, and that's it. Negative 3.84 times 10 to the third. Are we having fun? I'm having fun. Uh, here is a natural log problem. So suppose I want to find the time negative RC natural log of 1 minus V over V0. And I said RC is 0.1, V is 0.5, V0 is is, is 3.1. I've made up some numbers. If you can't tell I'm making up numbers, you can tell. Okay. So let's start right here. I'm going to say negative, And then I'm going to say 0.1 times. Now I'm going to do the natural log. So right here, the log button uh, defaults to some any base, but I want natural log. We usually use natural log in physics. It puts a parentheses there, 1 minus v, 0.5, divided by 3.1. Now I can do close parentheses, and then that should be it. Execute. So the time is uh, 1.759 times 10 to the negative 2. Now we're ready for some real stuff. Check that out. Vector operations. Let's do vector operations in the Casio FX 991CW class with clear all. Okay, so to do vector operations, I'm going to go to home and I'm going to go down here to the vector app. Now, the first thing that we want to do is to enter two vectors in our vector table, as you will. So it says press tools to define vectors. So here is the tool button. I'm gonna, I'm gonna press, it. actually it's tools button. It's not the tool button, it's the tools button. So tools. And I already have uh, things for vector A and vector B, but that's fine, we're gonna do it again. So I'm gonna click vector A, and then I already have one, but I'm just gonna make a new one. So when you do that, you, the first thing you need to do is say how many dimensions are there. And you could do a 2D vector or a 3D vector, but you'll notice I'm gonna do the cross product. And the cross product is a 3D thing. So let's do 3D vectors, the world is in 3D. That just makes more sense. So I'm going to uh, click over and go down to three and then confirm. Now it gives me the three values. I want one, two, three. I just made that up. So one, enter, two, enter, three, enter. And there's my vector. Okay, now let's go back and let's do the vector B, same thing, define new, three dimensions, confirm. And here is my vector B. Again, negative is that, right? Don't do, don't do the other one, negative two, enter. And then 0.5, enter, zero, enter. And now I have my vectors. Let's do A dot B. So I'm gonna go over here to the catalog. Oh, I'm gonna go back over here home vector and I'm going to click the catalog button. This will allow me to do a bunch of things with the vectors. I'm going to click vector and what I want to do is a dot b. So I first need vector a. So I'm going to click a and now I want to do the dot product. So the dot product I'm going to go back to catalog, click vector, vector calc and dot product and it puts a little dot there which is kind of nice. Now I need to do vector b. So I'm going to go to catalog, vector, B. Execute. Right there. And there we have our thing. It has the dot product, which is a scalar value. Okay. Next, we're going to do the cross product. So the cross product, I'm going to go ahead and, and clear that. And I need A cross B. So again, I need to pull up vector A. So catalog, vector, A. Now I need the cross product, catalog, vector, vector calc, cross product, and then catalog vector B, execute. And you'll see here that it does indeed give me a vector answer. It's a vector answer for the cross product. What about the unit vector of A? That one does come up in physics. So let's go uh, back. Uh, oh, I just deleted all that. Okay, 
and I want to do unit vector base. So I'm going to go to catalog vector vector calc unit vector, and then I need the vector a catalog vector vector a execute. So there is the unit vector. If you take the magnitude of that vector, you do get one. What about the absolute value of a or the magnitude of a? That one I did have a little. I didn't know how to do it right away. So you go over to uh, absolute value, numerical calculation, absolute value. And then I did, because it's, it's, kind of, it's not the absolute value, but it looks like that. And then I'm going to do the vector A. So vector A, execute. There's the magnitude of vector A. And then finally, I'm going to do a scalar times vector B. So let's just do clear, uh, catalog, vector B. I did it backwards. Times 3, execute. And there you go, vector calculations with the Casio FX991CW class with. Talk to you later. Peace out.